Okay, people, uh, follow the guide and let's dive into our crater. In front of us, we see the Himalaya. Let's follow this mountain ridge and that brings us to Africa. In the middle there, you see the Mediterranean Sea and Europe. Move to the right and yes, Greenland is a continent, people. Let's zoom out to the Americas, lying at the wrong place, as you see. On the right there, you see a hidden sea, but more about that later. Let's move on, people, follow the guide, zoom in on Australia. And finally, some land masses like Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia and India. So this is the end of our tour and may I present you the final Crater Earth map. And finally, let's have an overview and put in the continents. Don't forget the guide, please. And here it is, the official New World map. Let's take a look now at the Hidden Sea. Let's zoom in. You clearly see two passages there. That brings you out of our crater. And when you go to the right into Antarctica, that brings you to Mount Miro, from where you have a beautiful view on our continents. So the few years I have been making videos now, people have been sending me messages to look into the convex earth. Well, they were right. We also have a clue of Walt Hitler showing us the hidden sea and also the passage to it. So someone asked me, hey, what about your escape from flat earth theory? What happened to it? Well, let me show you what I think they did. For this example, I will paint two mountains in white. So now let's zoom in into the first one, the closest one to South America. This one has been presented to us as being a part of Antarctica. But let's zoom out. There you see the real peak of Antarctica. Take a look at the Google Maps view. So they just took the silhouette of the Antarctica peak and they swamped places. Now, if by any chance an admiral on a battleship would be listening to this video, and that would be one chance in a trillion, I would advise him, take your battleship and follow the yellow brick road. That would bring you to the gateway out of our crater. But be careful, be aware you will meet some heavy artillery fire. By doing this, you would be of great service to humanity. You would show the world the bigger earth and free us from our crater prison. Back to reality. Let's go back to the subject of the movement of the sun. Some people reacted in the comment that I made a mistake. They were right, because the sun was rising in the west. I guess I was thinking from left to right, and I forgot that Japan is the land of the rising sun, of course. 
some people were suggesting I should use the analemma and then I would only need one sun. But as you see in the example, there are holes in the time frame. For the moment I'm going to keep on working with the two systems. We'll see how this evolves. Let's make an animation with the new map. And here you see when one system is fading out, the other system is moving in. Let's zoom in on the first system. Moving over the Americas, going down, and there you see the sun is moving across the hidden sea. That is probably the reason it is not frozen. And back to its starting point. Let's zoom in on the second sun, that might be more interesting. First, take a freeze frame. I think this is the international dateline. From there the sun is moving to the left. Let's slow it down a bit. So at the position where you would have the Greenwich Meridian line, the sun is moving towards Antarctica. I think the international date line is actually the silhouette of our crater. Now you have a counter rotating system. Here with four suns two suns, but now I have a new problem, because the sun is rising in the west, in the Americas. A solution might be, you have two compasses, one normal and one inverted. That might be very useful when you are falsifying flight routes. So now I might be debunking my own theory of north lines and south lines, but that's okay because I'm making these videos to find the truth and not for being right. Let's return to our supercomputer Ra. A very interesting video might be one of Doug Vogt, where he reconstructs the Hebrew letters with a sine wave in a torus. I'm going to basically be going around, this is the zero place, and we're going to go around every 45 degrees around the middle. We go around, and you're going to view eight of the letters, the top and the bottom. See that? That's the origin of the heart shape. And also view from the bottom, you have one of the letters also. We'll go through it all. Another interesting figure is Nassim Haramein. In his first videos he explains that Yahweh is a tetragrammaton. So I split them in two and then I slid the bottom part into the top part. Match the lines to generate the star tetrahedron. I would have eight star tetrahedrons coming together to generate the 64 tetrahedron grid. The 64 tetrahedron. You could fit Metatron's cube in it, or the double Solomon star the Atlanteans are using to terraform our crater. So you could put the 64 tetrahedron on our crater. The first Solomon star with in the center Ur Solomon, Jerusalem. The second one, the third one, and that fits into the 64 tetrahedron. 
which is in my view the ley lines. So I think you can put this one in the garbage can. Now you can start pulling in this pattern with buildings. With obaliska, basilica, cathedra, pyramids, ziggurats. You see all these words refer to the baraka system. Now you have three possibilities. The supercomputer Ra is hovering above the earth and the earth is spinning around. Second possibility, Ra is spinning around above a motionless ball earth. Or possibility 3, they are both spinning. May I present you Terra or the Taurus of Ra. Ra is ruling with terror, playing God, the creator, the Ka in the Taurus of Ra. So crater is also the Ka in the Taurus of Ra. For people who saw my video, the Vikings were Jews. In that video I explained that I think that English is reversed Hebrew. When you reverse Terra, you get the word Aret. What would Scotty from Star Trek say to Captain Kirk? Scotty would say, Alright Captain, let's get our spaceship back to planet Aret.